Well, Christina, welcome to the programme. Thank you for joining us. Ten things a parent must know about the dirty drug methamphetamine. We all hear about pea fueled rampages and, and about the dangers of, of meth. But is it something that affects lots of people? How dangerous is it? How, how, how much of a problem is it? We're amongst the highest users in the Western world. It's taken us 15 years to do what it took America 35 years to do. We've surpassed their statistics, as able as we are to gather statistics. Mm. You, you talk about New Zealand being naive, nice and naive. What do you mean? I mean most New Zealanders whom it's not affecting uh, were, are content to tuck themselves into their homes at 6 o'clock every night thinking they're safe. But when you align that with the statistics, first of all, it costs us $1.3 billion a year as taxpayers to fight this war on drugs. Secondly, the courts and the police agree and uh, bandy um, statistics like 70 to 80 per cent all crime committed and all crime seen, all cases seen at the High Court involve methamphetamine over the last three or four years. We know that just today, for example, in the Herald, there was an article on the offend, armed offenders squads, how that's uh, over the last three years has increased by 470% in call out. And they're going because methamphetamine is a dangerous drug. One of the most, I suppose, fascinating but also terrifying bits of the book is you, you have, you call it dancing with the devil, you, you have case studies of people. There's one that actually is on, on the back of the book as well. It's a, a grandmother who phones you up mm -hmm. and says, I'm terrified there are people outside my house. And you say, call the police. And she says, I can't call the police. He's my grandson. Mm -hmm. And he's going to come in and rob me. Mm -hmm. How common is that? Frequent. It's very frequent. Assault, violence and theft from their home first but they're the easiest targets, aren't they? People who love and trust them. Remember, this is a drug also that uh, when people first start to use it, you may think, wow, they're, they're certainly on top of their game at the moment. They're on top of the world. You start to think, wow, aren't they looking good, feeling good, because they start acting confidently. Yeah. And then it starts quickly to assume an overconfidence and erratic behaviour. What used to be seen as, oh, good spirits becomes absolute crazy behaviour. Uh, remembering also that of a survey done in New Zealand by Chris Wilkins from Massey University, uh, it was found of frequent users of methamphetamine, 63% are in the full-time workforce. Wow. So those same people who are letting a drug control them are in your workplace. So that leads to fraud and theft within the workplace and, of course, accidents and silly behaviour. Because you talk a lot about, about the fact that if, if you are taking P, mm -hmm. you are a criminal. That's right, because it's a Class A illicit drug. Uh, you actually talk, talk quite a lot about the, some of the, the government-funded drug agencies, that they, you don't think they're doing the job properly. I know they're not doing the job, and why I know that is because out of the hundreds of people that have come to me, all of them have disclosed they've been looking for help for a while or they've avoided help because it's too easy to. Uh, the grandson that you've quoted on the back cover, he was to go to a court-appointed um, rug rehab. He went once, they said, oh, you know, you're not really interested. He said, no, I'm not. And they said, we'll see you when you are. That's not good enough. Um, for one thing, as you and I as taxpayers are paying for that service, there's been not a lot of accountability. Um, really all they have to do is change their attitude. Their catch cry, and I'm talking about the biggest funded agency in New Zealand, is when you're ready. That was something that belonged to alcohol in the 1990s. And that's because alcohol is freely available, socially acceptable and legal. We're talking about a drug that's class A illicit and very destructive. So when you're ready just doesn't cut it when you're talking to a meth user because the drug's going to tell them they're never ready to stop. You have to intervene. It's as simple as that. Because your, your approach is very proactive. Absolutely, it's called intervention. And it's been the one known to work with methamphetamine. Methamphetamine is a different drug. Yeah. It's not the same as all the others. And I think when you can watch a person's progression 
with methamphetamine, you see what used to be good humour suddenly becomes quite obsessive, quite crazy, risk-taking, reckless behaviour. I think the government's doing a great job with the things that have been put in place so far. And one of the things that I think is going to make a big difference is drug driving testing because I, it's a trend amongst users now to mix meth with alcohol. And they tell me that that means that they can go on instead of piking by two o'clock on Sunday morning, they can go for two or three days. And they do. The book's very practical, as we said. It's, it's full of, of advice and just a guide to, to warning signs. Why did, you, why did you write it? The reason I started in this field is I'm, I'm a prisoner. <laughs> um, it was not by intention or by design, um, as many things aren't really when you can call them a calling. Um, about 10 years ago, uh, an acquaintance took his life and I did live with quite an unassailable guilt for a couple of years because I had heard myself say to people, you know, there's I can't put my finger on, but there's something wrong with him. I know he's hurting and I just can't put my finger on it. And I thought, I'm going to go and talk to him. But because of his standing socially, I didn't want to breach the protocol and didn't really know what to say. But all I needed to say was, how can I help you? You need some help. And you know what the worst thing that can happen if you suspect someone is using and they're not? So what? They can be annoyed? You might save their life, though, by asking the question. Yeah. Christina, thank you very much. It's a fascinating and terrifying book. Thank you. Thanks very much.